Today we will be discussing about development of charges and electrical double layer. Development of charges Charges develop either due to electron capture by metals during electrodispersion or preferential adsorption of ions from solution. It results in what is called electrical double layer. Out of this, the most accepted reason is preferential adsorption of positive or negative ions on the salt particles. We will explain this with the help of an example. Take the reaction between silver nitrate and potassium iodide solution. It results in two types of salts. One is negatively charged salt and the other one positively charged salt. The reaction is between silver nitrate and potassium iodide. So evidently the products will be silver iodide and potassium nitrate. Now we will check what is the cause of formation of two types of colloids. B is a substance which is taken in large quantity and A is the substance called the reagent which is always added in small amounts. Suppose we are taking silver nitrate solution and it is added to potassium iodide. Here silver nitrate becomes A that is the reagent. Now the precipitated silver iodide adsorb iodide ions from the dispersion medium and negatively charged salt will be the result. We get AgI slash I minus because iodide ions are more in the solution. Now consider the same reaction in the reverse manner. That means when Potassium iodide is added to silver nitrate solution. A positively charged salt is formed because silver ions get adsorbed from the dispersion medium onto silver iodide. So the product form will be AGI slash AG positive which is positively charged. Reaction of Ferric chloride with hot water. Ferric chloride on reaction with hot water undergoes hydrolysis to form ferric hydroxide salt. This salt is positively charged due to preferential adsorption of Fe3 plus ions. Now, if ferric chloride is added to a basic solution, the hydrolysis results in a negatively charged salt which is the due to the preferential adsorption of OH- ions on ferric hydroxide. Diagram of Helmholtz electrical double layer. We have represented ferric hydroxide salt. Ferric hydroxide salt is a positively charged salt due to the adsorption of Fe3 plus ions. Have a closer look of the diagram. Ferric hydroxide is the colloidal particle. Surrounding that we have the adsorption of Fe3 plus ions. That is forming the first layer which is the fixed layer. The fixed layer attracts the counter ions over it. The counter ions are hydroxide ions. That forms the diffuse layer or the mobile layer. Thus, around each colloidal particle, we find a sheet of fixed layer and a diffuse layer. And this is the basic principle behind Helmholtz electrical double layer. Now we will define what is Helmholtz electrical double layer. The combination of two layers of oppositely charged particles around the colloidal particles form what is called electrical double layer. The first layer of ions that are directly attached on the surface of the colloidal particle form the fixed layer. The counter ion 
remains close to it forming the second layer which is always diffused or mobile and so it is referred to as the diffuse layer both of them surrounds a colloidal particle and this is what is called helmholtz electrical double layer how to define electrokinetic potential or zeta potential the fixed layer and the diffuse layer are having opposite charges whenever opposite charges are arranged at a distance that gives rise to a difference in the potential this potential is known as zeta potential or electrokinetic potential the presence of charges on colloids also contribute to the stability of the colloid or sol now we will discuss what is hardy schulz rule coagulation of a colloid is facilitated by the presence of counter ions this is explained by hardy schulz rule the statement goes like this greater the valency of the flocculating ion greater is its power to cause precipitation now what do you understand by flocculating ion flocculating ion is nothing but the substance that is added to cause precipitation or flocculation smaller the quantity of the electrolyte needed greater or higher is the coagulation power of that ion we are also going to define what is coagulation value and gold number first one coagulation value the minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimoles per liter required to cause precipitation of a salt in 2 hours is known as coagulation value coming to what is gold number it is the number of milligrams of lyophilic colloid added to 10 ml gold solution to stop the coagulation if 1 ml of 10% sodium chloride is added to it now we are going to explain order of flocculation power of positively charged and negatively charged salt for example in the coagulation of a positively charged salt the flocculation power will be in the order highest negative charge to the lowest and in the same manner in the coagulation of negatively charged salt the flocculating power is shown by the positively charged ion greater the charge on the positive uh, positive ion greater will be its coagulation power suppose we take the example of ferric hydroxide salt first we should understand what is the charge on ferric hydroxide salt so if you take ferric hydroxide salt to be positively charged it has the formula feoh thrice slash fe3 plus now which is the counter ion which comes and attaches there it should be a negatively charged ion and so greater the charge on the negatively charged particle more will be the coagulation power so which one will be having the highest coagulation or precipitation power it is ferrocyanide followed by phosphate ion followed by sulfate ion and finally chloride ion likewise we can attempt the second question also knowing that metal sulfides are negatively charged identify what is the coagulating ion and try to answer this on your own hope you have understood this